Let's talk about what to expect when you start to preflight your project in InDesign. And so I've got a screenshot here of what InDesign might look like. Now I've got an older screenshot that has the white background. I just, I kind of like it better. You can change the way that your InDesign looks and I will show you how to do that, but you can't make it white anymore to my knowledge. You can just make it light gray. So I'm going to leave this screenshot here until it gets so old that it doesn't look anything like uh, the current version of InDesign. But with that being said, let's take a look at the workspace and the first place that you should use to identify whether or not you have any pre-flight issues. And pre-flight issues are issues that would prevent your project from outputting correctly, right? You want to make sure that all the files and the, the, the document fonts and all the text in your project is going to output the way that you want. And so at the very bottom left-hand corner of your screen, there is a, a red circle in my example here, and it's indicating that there is an error in your project, or multiple errors. In this case, it's just indicating that there's one error. At any time you have that issue, you should stop what you're doing, and you should pre-flight your project, and you should see what the issue is, and you should fix it. Um, it is better to fix it as an issue occurs than to wait to the end of your project. But with that being said, you could, in theory, not fix any issues until the very end of your project, and then spend your time fixing them one at a time, like in my previous example that had a bunch of issues with the file. Now, these issues might occur because someone gave you files that are broken and you have to fix them, like you will do for project one, or I call them assignments in Art 1200 and assignment one. Um, but it also, it could be a result of an error on your end that you did by accident and you didn't realize. And so I would recommend anytime you see that you have a pre-flight issue in the bottom left-hand corner, ideally I want to see a green circle. I call it a green thumbs up. It's telling everything is kind of good to go and you can move forward. Um, if you see that red circle, you should stop and you should pre-flight. When you open the pre-flight panel and you check for your errors, you're going to do what we did in the previous video where you're going to recognize the link error, expand the arrow to see that it's a missing link, meaning that InDesign can't find the file that you're telling it that you want to use. And then if you expand again, it will tell you the file name and then it will tell you what page it's on. Now to fix it, you have two ways to do this. You can click the little page one on the pre-flight panel and it will take you to that page in the document and it will highlight the picture so that you can have an idea of what picture you're looking for. The better way to start this process is to open the links panel. The links panel can be opened via the window menu and then links and the, the panels that are listed under the window menu are in alphabetical order so it's a little bit higher than halfway down the list and you'll find links. Now this will show all the links you have in your entire project not just the ones that have problems and so I only have one if we go back here I only have one picture in this project it's a one-page document has a picture of a windmill and InDesign cannot find that windmill and so it's telling me I have a picture of a windmill here it's probably a little too small for you to see on the video, um, but it's not what's important right now. It also tells you the name of the file, 1307648 underscore 17351491-1.jpg. Uh, that is probably not the best file name if you wanted to know exactly what you're looking for, but you know, that's what it is. Right here I have a red stop sign. In newer versions of InDesign it is a red circle. The, the red is bad. Red means I can't find it, I can't output it, it's not going to work. If it was a yellow triangle, then it's just a warning. It's saying, hey, this is different than what you put in here. Are you sure you want to continue with this different file? The one is the same as the one on the pre-flight panel. If you click it, it will take you to a page, in this case page one, and it will highlight uh, the file that has the issue. And then it tells you that it's a JPEG. That's just a way for you to quickly see what kind of files you're using in your project. We talked about the idea of manual preflighting back here. And we said that we want to make sure that all of our uh, images are the right color, mode, size, resolution, file format, etc. And if we were to look at this and decide that JPEGs were the right file format, we could say, okay, yeah, we're using the right file format. But if we decided that a JPEG is the wrong file format, which is a wrong file format for printing, JPEG is a web file format, that's a way that you could say, oh, I'm manually pre my project and I see that that's a JPEG, I need to fix that file and replace it. But what we're focused on right now is fixing broken links. On the links panel, just like on the pre-flight panel, if you expand the bottom half of the window, it will tell you more about the, the link or the picture. In this case, it tells us that the name of the file is such, it is a JPEG, it's a one-page document or one-page image, uh, it has RGB color mode, the status is missing. If I were to scroll down, it gives me more information about this. 
I cannot learn how to fix the issue though on the links panel the way that I can on the pre-flights panel. The link info is just telling me the facts about the picture. It will tell me the resolution and different things like that. And I'm concerned about those, but not when it's in terms of fixing a broken link. What I am concerned with is relinking the file. So if I have a broken link, I need to relink it so that it is linked. If your links panel is expanded, so you have the top half showing all of the pictures in your project and the bottom half showing the info about whatever picture is selected, halfway down the panel there will be a series of buttons across the middle. In the newest version of InDesign, there is one that has a little cloud and you could relink from the cloud. We're not going to really talk about the cloud a lot in this class because you're not required to have access to the cloud. But if you were using the cloud, you could use the, the little chain that has a cloud on it and you could relink it and you could say this file is saved to the Creative Cloud and I'll show you where it's at. For most of us, however, we will always click on the little chain that does not have the cloud and that will open the relink dialog and it'll allow us to say, okay InDesign, you don't know where this picture is but I know where it's at and I'll show you. And so you'll go on your computer, you'll say it's right here, it's on my desktop or it's in this other folder and you will relink the project or the file. So let's talk a little bit more about what links are. Links are pictures. One of the most important things to remember about Adobe InDesign is that items that you place into the workspace or onto the workspace from an outside source are most often not embedded into the document itself. Items are linked to the location they are saved in and InDesign will display a low resolution preview or version of those linked items so that you can navigate through your project faster. If you have 400 pages in your project, you can flip through them really fast because the pages don't actually have images and things embedded in them. They're, they're, they're linked to somewhere else. They're saved on your computer or on your flash drive or wherever they happen to be saved. This increases the display performance, but it also increases the ability to have broken links or to send your files to somebody and not send them any of your pictures because you didn't realize that those pictures are not embedded into your project. Moving, renaming, or deleting a file will cause a link between your document and your file to break meaning InDesign is looking for it in a specific location and it can no longer find it. Renaming it does the same thing. Even if you rename it and you leave your file in the same exact location it was before, instead of it being labeled image A, it's now labeled image B, and InDesign is looking for image A. And when it goes to that folder, there's no image A, so it doesn't know which image to display. So keep that in mind. Put a big star next to that in your notebook. Moving, renaming, or deleting a file will cause that link to break, which means you won't be able to send that file to someone else because InDesign can't find it to be able to share it. The links panel is used to manage the placed items or the graphics in your project. And so there are two types of errors that you might see in, on your links panel. You can open the links panel via the window menu. And what you want to see is you want to see this column right here that has a yellow triangle and this, the red stop signs. You don't want to see anything in those panels. That's telling you there's a problem. So where it says assignment 1a.tiff and assignment 1c and f and h, they are good to go. There is nothing wrong with those, those images that you're using. But there is a problem with assignment 1b.tiff and there is a problem with assignment 1d and assignment 1e. The yellow triangle means that wherever you have placed this image, you have opened it, you have edited it somewhere else, and InDesign is saying that the original image that you put into your project is no longer linking to a file that matches it exactly. It knows where the file is and it can put that new image in your project, but something's different about it. Maybe it was a colored image and you made it grayscale, or maybe it was um, 300 resolution and you opened it and you cropped it and you made it 72 resolution. It's telling you it's been changed in some way and so you have to accept that or you need to go back and create a new image and just replace that image in your project. Yellow is not so bad because it's still going to link to a picture. It just wants you to know that it's not the same. The bad ones are the red circles or the red stop signs and they mean that InDesign is looking for your image in a particular location location and it just cannot find it. And so you must relink images that have the little red circle or the little red stop sign depending on the version of InDesign that you're using. I talked about this a little earlier in this video so I'll quickly go through this but when you are looking at the links on the links panel or the graphics that are shown on your links panel whenever you see a little number next to something that is looking at a specific instance of a file and so if you click on that the bottom half of your links panel is able to be expanded and it will tell you everything you need to know about the picture 
However, if you do not see a number next to the listing of a picture, it means that it's a grouping of pictures. And in this case, assignment 1a.tiff has a little number 2 next to it. It's saying that this image is used twice in your project, and if you expand, hit the little triangle, and with the drop down expand, it'll say that you're using assignment 1a.tiff on page 1 and also on page 2. And you can see that assignment b, c, d, f, uh, and h they're all used twice, and so there's no page number next to them. And so if you wanted to fix these issues, you'd have to expand the little triangle, and you'd have to see the exact instance of the picture. And now I could click the little number 1. It would take me to page 1, and it would show me exactly where assignment 1a.tiff is located. And then I could use that relink button that we talked about to relink the image. The last thing that you should be aware of on the links panel is that the link info tells you facts about your picture. And so if I tell you that you have to have an actual and an effective resolution or PPI of 300 or higher for your project, you could look at this expanded drop down and say the actual PPI is 300 and the effective is 443. Now ideally I want them both to be 300, but they have to be at least 300, so I would say well this meets the requirements for the project. If I told you that your images should be CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black for printing, it will tell you that you're using the CMYK color space. And so you could say, yep, that's good. If I told you that you had to have a print file format and you recognize that a TIFF is a print file format, you could also check that off and say, yes, I have a, I have a print file format. All the things that I just did are manual forms of preflighting. And again, you don't have to do that manual preflighting until we learn how to do it in a lecture. Um, but you should be aware that there are manual preflighting things that you will do in addition to the automated preflighting.